This is Talk with Audrey. Welcome back. Like most of us, I subscribe to and receive a lot of newsletters. Well, in April of 2015, after an online marketing seminar, I signed up for Andrea Valls. Uh, she's an entrepreneur like many of us, a social media consultant, strategist, speaker, and co-author of Facebook Marketing All-in-One for Dummies and Facebook Ads Made Simple. So fast forward now to 2021 and her October 8th newsletter called Grief gratitude and business. Well, <laughs> stop me in my tracks. Um, it was really simple and included a link to her blog post and it read in part, Hi Audrey, today's blog post is probably the most vulnerable post I've ever written. I've been giving my Facebook tips and updates for a while, but you may have noticed that I've been a bit quieter this year. My blog post today shares a little more about why that was. It's about my dad, grief, and ultimately gratitude and then there's the link and she continues uh, this year hasn't been easy and yet my business has still been able to grow hopefully there are some thoughts that can help you or if you have tips for others please feel free to share them in the comments thank you Andrea Vall well it just really touched me so after more than a few days of thinking about the post, I decided to reach out to Andrea and I asked her to come on and share the six lessons that she took away from dealing with grief and business. So welcome Andrea and uh, thank you for your email. I'm really, really sorry to hear about your loss. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you so much, Audrey. In your newsletter, you summed up the challenges that a lot of folks have been dealing with during these last couple of years from a very personal and revealing perspective. Why did you decide to open up and share your experience with your subscribers? Yeah, I think it um, it just is really because I've heard so many stories, so many people struggling, going through some of this. And I think one of the biggest challenges in being an online business and being, you know, an entrepreneur is sometimes a sense of isolation. And so you know, we don't, we don't know what other people are going through. We, we think that other people may have it all together or something like that. And I, I just want to share that, you know, no matter where you are in business, if you're just starting out or have been, you know, running your business successfully for 11 years, like I have, you still run into these challenges and hard times. And um, I think it just makes us all uh, better together when we realize that we can, we share these experiences and we can, you know, lift each other up. Like most of us, you were looking forward to 2021 and expecting it to be better and hoping that the pandemic would be behind us. <laughs> we all just thought it would be like, oh, a month tops or something. And then it, you know, it stretched on through all of 2020. And then I think we all celebrated, oh, we're gonna turn the page a new year and, and it's gonna be great. And 2021 is really gonna be where it's at. And actually for me, and I know a lot of other people, it was worse. And um, it was it was way more challenging. And I think as things stretched on, it it becomes hard to keep your, you know, your energy up, your motivation up as you, you know, don't know when things are gonna end. But also, you know, life still continues to happen. And things like tragedy, death, all these things that can really um, compound our feelings and and challenges, <laughs> you know, uh, during during COVID, we're still going on. And I I like to kind of think of it as I had all these things happening with the lovely little ganache of COVID happening on top, you know, because <laughs> because I I uh, you know was struggling with my divorce and then got the diagnosis for my dad's bladder cancer and, you know, just struggled with some other family health challenges. And, and when you're already so run down and so um, have, have so much difficulty in, in kind of maintaining your day to day life, adding these bigger challenges on top can really just throw you into a tailspin. And you went through a lot. You had one setback after another at the beginning of 2021. You lost your father, and for you, uh, you said that he was your rock. Tell us about your dad and the impact that he's had on your life and your career. 
Yeah, he was just a, you know, he was the, the, you know, of course, I, I am very blessed and lucky to have a wonderful upbringing. Um, both my parents are just fantastic have, and have inspired me in different ways. But my dad was kind of the one that I would call when I was really having a hard day and he would just listen and just be there and say, wow, that sounds so hard. He wouldn't try and fix anything. He would just, you know, be there for me. And so, you know, it was hard to think about him not being around. I wasn't going to be able to pick up the phone and, and call. And, um, and we actually went through a pretty traumatic um, time with him in after his surgery after his surgery he went into kind of this deep dementia where we kind of in a sense lost him at that time and um and we didn't know what to do we you know just making all these decisions about his care were were challenging and learning so much about having to learn all this about our healthcare system and medicare and what you know what we could do was also hard but like he was just a, a beautiful, beautiful person. And so it was, um, he, he, he was an entrepreneur before uh, I knew what that was. He, um, he had his own business back in the 70s. And I, I didn't realize how unusual that could be. And, you know, he got the first cell phone he was always on the cutting edge of stuff which was kind of kind of funny the cell phone was like a big giant brick um and and he um he, he was just a, a fun always always had a, a smile for people great sense of humor and um and really a a huge philanthropist uh, great at supporting causes like you know helping refugees in the area helping um, the local food pantry. He was um, won several awards for being being there and being such a, a great help to that community. So, so it was just really really hard. And and I was lucky. I know I was lucky that he lived so long. We had him around for so long. But that never makes it easier. It we you know we always have that grief and that sadness that they can't live forever, right? So it was hard. I can't even imagine it, Andrea. Uh, but despite all of that, your business was thriving. And I'm not quite sure how you did it. It, it actually is kind of interesting because this is has been my best year ever um, in my business. And I started my business in 2009. And, um, and I, I, it, there were, it was not easy. There was tough times where I literally could not get out of bed and was just crying on my bed all day and thinking, how am I going to do this? Um, but um, the um, the thing that I would say for sure is that you you start cutting out things that aren't necessary. You can't try and do everything. You can't do everything the same way. And I was able to um, lean on my team for sure. And, um, and that was helpful to, to be able to do that. Um, I didn't have a, I don't have a very big team. I have a very small agile team, which is, which is great. Um, but I was able to lean on them a little bit more. And that was actually good for me because I tend to have a little more control over things and try and do too much. So um, for sure, it was just, you know, don't try and do everything the same same way. And and I think the other thing I took away from this is really focus on the most important activities in your business because that is going to, inf you know, help you get clear on on your priorities and realize that you don't have to do everything. Um, I you that's why I kind of wasn't blogging very much. I used to blog almost every week for for years and i would you know have ebb and flow a little bit wasn't as religious as some people but i really stopped blogging and it was kind of hard for me to let that go because that was a big part of my identity and big part of what i did was was sending out that blog um but i had to cut that cut that down i had to cut down things um you know, in my, in my extracurricular life and my, um, not do as much volunteering or things like that. 
And I just needed the space because you never know when that grief is going to hit for sure. And then the other lesson I had was just not over promising. And this is a challenge for me because I tend to be very optimistic about when things can get done. I'm like, oh yeah, I can have that done tomorrow. And, and I did, I did fall down. I did, um, I did fail a lot and I had clients where I had to refund some money and I just apologized and said, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to deliver it in the way that I had said. So I made sure that I, you know, was able to give myself that grace a little bit. Um, and, and definitely that's another lesson is just don't be too hard on yourself because it's hard. There were so many times where I thought, I, I got it, I got it, I got it. And now looking back, I'm like, I, I did not have it. <laughs> it was not, it was, I was just, you know, at times just really going through um, just, you know, a little bit of I'm fine kind of mentality and I wasn't always fine. And I think um, making sure to reach out for people to people when you're not fine is, is a big thing too. And, and another lesson was just not to rush everything because I felt like I should, um, you know, be, be okay, be over it. And, and, you know, even now just like coming up through the holidays, I've realized that, it's a hard time as well. Those there's just, you're going to find these hard times and there's no right time frame for grief, um, for sure. And then also just realize that it is going to get better. There were so many times where I thought that the, the, the fog and the cloud and the, the pain would never lift. And, um, and there was a day in July that I, I've had, had finally had this little spark of energy. And I thought, oh, wow, thank God it's not gone forever, you know, because I had no energy for the for the first whole part of the year. And um, and then we ended up having a New Year's party in at the end of July <laughs> for a, a number of friends of of mine who had gone through such so much grief, so much hardship in the beginning of 2021 when we didn't really expect it. And um, we just declared it a new year and said we're going to start fresh right now at this time. And you can always have a new fresh start and a new fresh perspective on things. So. Yeah, that was those were kind of my takeaways from from that whole process. Andrea, I also realized how much a part of my life you've been and are uh, since 2015 in my inbox. Your story was an experience that uh, a lot of people have had, and I'm so very, very grateful to you for coming on and sharing that experience with us. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate the invitation and and uh, I think that it's so important and kind of an interesting thing about this and I, I actually would c encourage other people to, you know, share some personal things because this, this particular blog post was probably one of the most commented and dis largest discussions I had either from people emailing, from comments, from comments on my Facebook posts about it. Um, and I was a little scared to share it because it was so personal, and um, I was, I was scared a little bit to open up in that way. But it's, I think it's so important to make that human connection, you know, even if you are, you know, an entrepreneur or some sort of any type of thought leader, you might feel a little bit scared to to open up that way. But I think people want to do business with people. And when you share your perspective on life, I think it's, it's just a great thing because we all then can feel more connected. For more about Andrea, visit her site, andreavault.com.